And I'm wondering how to be 60. It's scaring the shit out of me. Ho, ho, ho. How to be 60 podcast friends. It's your last dose of she, Cara McKenzie, and me, Kay Adams, before Christmas is upon us. And looking at you, Karen, can I just say, Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer had a very shiny nose. <laughs> I have been partying a lot. Do you think I'm going to develop one of those bloody strawberry noses? You do. You've got the wee blood vessels coming. I know. Oh. Where, the, where the seeds are in the strawberry, it's just get, it's getting <laughs> bigger. And... <laughs> a nose like a strawberry. I know it's going purple, isn't it? Wonderful. I'm going to have to start getting green makeup to put over it. Yes. Yeah. Oh, is it, what, what are you drinking? And I can get hold of <laughs> 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 not at all, not at all. Although I did have this gin recently that looked like castor oil. It was in a tin. It, it, it wasn't a good PR thing. It was awful. And, and <laughs> where did you pick no, that? It was, Papa went. <laughs> You're going through the bins. <laughs> <laughs> I was in the pub. I went for a drink for going out for some indeed. And I said to the woman, and there, this pub is notorious. I mean, it's great for all their gins. It's known for its wide range of gins. And I said. I'd like something that I've never had before. So none of your botanicals, none of your, you know, just give me some. turning into an old soap. <laughs> Hence the nose. <laughs> and honest to God, you should have seen it. It was an organic gin in this, what looked like a castor oil tin. And it wasn't that great. I had to say to them, I wouldn't have it again. So. <laughs> she said after she put <laughs> the glass down. back to down. the botanicals again. <laughs> By the way, what's happening with the teeth? I have had my first consultation and I'm going back soon. I've got an appointment quite soon. Right, because it has these wee black bits on them. Oh, God. I bit my lunch. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so three more sleeps. How excited are you? Well, I am actually relatively excited. I've got the neighbours coming around for drinks and nibbles tonight, so I've got that to prepare when I leave here. But, um, drinks and nibbles. I know. So you're like <laughs> bloody Margot Ledbetter. <laughs> What nibbles are you giving them? Uh, olives, you like olives? I know. I'll, I'll bake things and I'll yeah, and I'll cook things. Oh, will you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's... volavons. Oh, I'm not a volavon. I never did like a volavon. No, no, they were all a bit with a bit of seventies, weren't in they? And or... that disgusting sauce. What was that chicken? Oh stuff? yeah, yeah, yeah. Like um, chunky chicken supreme that you used to put in them. Oh, my God, it was what like was that thing? again. Remember God, it? I never. No, I just. I don't think I ever tasted a volavon. They just looked revolting, and probably because they were never homemade. Somebody just brought them from various mm. supermarkets. No, they were. Good. Are you excited about Christmas anyway? Oh, I'm like no. I feel terrible actually because Ian is Mister Christmas. He loves it like a child. Um, the the kids also would like to love it more, but I. The kids would like to love it more. Are you they, stopping them? No, but they would like me to love it more. All right, and. I would like to love it more for their sake, but it, it just doesn't do it for me. I mean, I oh am looking God, forward. Kate, it's not all about you. No, that's what I'm saying. I feel guilty and I try. Look, I've got, have you seen my decorations? Have you seen my two foot high gnomes? Oh, they are so ugly. They're depressing. They are just, they're creepy, Kate. But you're kidding. That, no, that, I'm not kidding. They're creepy. I've, well, that, sinister. that was my effort to try and be Mrs. Christmas. I've got Santa Claus <laughs> and I've got Mrs. Mrs. Claus. Claus. And then I've got a big tree. Did you see my big tree? Oh, no, I didn't. I wasn't invited that much into no, the No, well, I, no, well, I like to keep you in the servants' quarters. So that's right Did enough. you pay for those gnomes? Of course I bloody paid for them. Did you like a shop what? lifted them? No, I wanted to get them out of the bloody garden centre with those under no, my arm. I didn't know whether they were gifts because... I love them. Christ, I wouldn't have paid for them. <laughs> <laughs> I think the thing Jesus. is for me, and you, I'm playing right into your hands here, it's all about time. Because December <laughs> is, I, oh, 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 indeed. <laughs> I have said for years, I would love to, do you know Martha Stewart? Yeah, in America. You know, that American the, the, sort of yes, woman who lives yes. in a cream world, a beige cream I've world. I've heard of her and I know she's a cook or something. Well. And, you know. She starts preparing for Christmas and she bakes little biscuits on the 1st of December and she staff that makes, do that. makes little decorations. And there's a bit of me would love to be that, but I would just have to take December off. And no. then December's so busy. And, and Hang so, on, hang on. Oh Why is December God. busier than every, any other month? Well, because, I don't know, there's something about the end of the year, you're crashing towards the end of the year. Because what I really do look forward to is time. Right. So we're going away this Christmas mm. 
Um, it's fantastic. I've got this friend who's uh, Polish, actually, and her whole big family's coming over from Poland. She's got a one-bedroom flat, so they're moving in here and they're going to look lovely. after the dog. Oh, that's lovely. So they're going to have a nice Christmas with my two gnomes and my big Christmas tree. Do you know tree. set the heating? Uh, no. No, I've you'll need to do that. I've deliberately left that off the list. <laughs> and, you know, so the time to spend with Ian and the girls and just going for walks and stuff, I absolutely cherish yeah you couldn't bring that time forward a bit to enable you to actually spend time in the run up to christmas actually buying gifts or no just no, no, no no so I you're prioritizing work over well i've got to pay for the bloody christmas oh, come, for on. God's sake. come on i know God's i know sakes. i know I, I do i do worry about it um, what do you worry about well because I, I think i've cheated my children for, of christmas have you got them anything you no. bought them anything? Of course I bought them things. Don't be silly. I'm not that terrible. I, I mean, I do try. I do try. I really do. Well, what have you done anyway, Mrs. Bloody Christmas? What do you mean, what have I done? Well, what have you done that's so special apart? Um, Bake well, some nibbles for the neighbours. Just enjoying blinking life. I'm enjoying socialising. I've got a... I've well, got a as that red nose will attest to. <laughs> well, there is that. <laughs> You'll not get knocked off your bike, that's for sure. Not with that red nose going on. I know. I know. It's pretty bad. I mean, have you written cards? Have Actually, you... that's a point. I have written some cards, but what I've decided to do is I'm going to phone people instead of sending that's cards. That's not a bloody treat, is it? Well... It's certainly not happening for this year. Well, I've actually done one phone call and that's not because I forgot about the person. <laughs> and it's not because they sent me a card and I thought, oh, God, forgot to send one to them. But actually... Is picking up the phone when you call? <laughs> yes, they Straight do. Straight to voicemail they again, They do Stephen. because I've got that's a new strange. phone. <laughs> they don't know the new number. <laughs> oh, very good. <laughs> so I had a really nice conversation with um, an old friend, uh, in fact, just a couple of days ago, and you know what? It was so much nicer and cheaper. No, it was just so much nicer than than. Oh, my my handwriting's. I was going to say illegitimate, illegible, <laughs> and and it's just. And I'm bored, and I hate writing, and I just think, oh my god, there is so much more pleasure picking up the phone and having a conversation. You're just a lady. That is no, because it takes more time to have the conversation, but it's more relaxing as well. Does that make me lazy? No, I don't know. I think it's more personal as well. Do you think? Oh, Christ, these cards. You know what? I like getting the cards. I don't put them up because I've not got enough surfaces uh, and I could hang them up in strings and whatever. And then I just think, oh, well, uh, You are slagging me off for not enjoying <laughs> Christmas. <laughs> you can't spirit. be arse writing cards and you can't Have be arse putting cards? them up. Not yet. Well, hang on, we've got three sleeps. Well, <laughs> there's plenty time, plenty time. <laughs> you could do that um, uh, that one that you said, you know, electronic emails, although I don't fancy that either. You know, the electronic Christmas cards. I've had a couple of them this year. Oh, and you've got to sit there and open them, haven't you, until the Labrador that. pulls the bottom of the decoration and the tree falls down and all that kind of thing. You're sitting there for two minutes. Watching. But then that's it. I know. And no. then they say, love, Mary. <laughs> I know. I'd rather have one of your weird phone calls, to be honest. Um, I'm thinking this is your last Christmas as a non-granny. You're right, actually. I'm very excited about that. It's uh, Yeah, I know. So Lisa's having, all being well, a baby at the end of February. And the good thing is... God, that's not long. I know, I know. So she got married last year. They were in honeymoon Christmas last year. So I just assumed that her and Adam would be going down south to, to Newcastle to see Adam's parents. But no! Adam's going down on his own. Lisa's with me at Christmas. Your result, what a bonus. But but, but you're breaking up a young family. <laughs> it wasn't my, Lisa did say, oh no, they open their presents in a really funny way. Like they don't make a big thing of it. So no, 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 I'm staying here with you. I mean, obviously it'll all I change think, next I year. I think you should have insisted that she went with Adam. No. I, 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 I do? No, Lisa's strong-willed. There's no way. No, no. She had made up her mind that she enjoys Christmas and she's hanging on you to the last... On, I you have absolutely pressure did. on her to do oh that. Oh, my God. No. You have. I, there's no way. I could not do that. I could not do that. I tell you, um, on Lisa, I went to... Uh, I had a midnight, midnight, a midwife appointment with her this week. So and you're forcing yourself on the whole situation. She asked me, she asked me, because it was my birthday, she asked me to come along. Do -dum, do -dum, do -dum. Really loud heartbeat. Oh. Fantastic. It was so nice, so nice. So, um, no, so I've got Christmas with uh, Lisa and Alex and Stephen. So, I mean, it'll change next year, but yeah. Lisa and, uh, oh, so Stephen and your two girls? Yes. Oh, 
Oh, yes. How lovely. I know it is. It's lovely. This will be the last one, but it's lovely. It's a bonus year. And did you not have a family meal out planned? Oh, my, that's a, <laughs> that was a funny one. So uh, we have, we always have a big family meal, uh, yeah, just before Christmas, where Richard and Linda come along and Stephen and I and the girls and... Richard, and your ex. Richard, my ex. the children. Yes. So... It's getting a bit odd now. We've heard about this just on a few <laughs> weeks on the road. I... So Richard and Linda were away in a nice big holiday on the way back. She got COVID. Very I, convenient. I, um, I know. I think she's not really enjoying my company anymore. And then on the afternoon of the meal, Stephen bowed out and said, <laughs> I think they're meeting secretly on their own. I think they are. I think they are. And uh, so... For the big meal, I, I said to Stephen, well, this meal's just getting cheaper and cheaper. And he said, I thought you might have said, I'm really sorry you can't come along. <laughs> but it is, it was a lot cheaper. So it was you so, and Richard, Richard and I, with the parents and, and the children. Yes, it was funny. I'm saying it was funny. It was just, oh, this is nice. Oh, there's something peculiar. No, here, there's not. It? No, it was nice. It wasn't odd at all. No, 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 it, it is, it is it definitely odd. It was fine. Have you got Stephen a nice present? Well, actually... What I gave him was some personal training lessons. <laughs> <laughs> and I have to say with my friend Caroline, and the it's first thing... I can't say your fat back. Well, the first thing Caroline was said, listen, Hen, have you forced that on him because he's not going to be interested? And I said, no. And I, I lugged in on his, because he's had them in the run up uh, to Christmas. And the first thing uh, she said to him, are you wanting to do this? Was this your choice or was it her? Was it Mackenzie's? And he said, no, it was mine. Well, he's changed shape. Ooh. The gut is no longer, Ooh. He, you know, Ooh, he can now see it? his feet. He's having an affair with Linda. Well, I wonder. I mean, it's all You hear about that, people changing their shapes and they start I mean, looking after themselves. He gets COVID before yeah, the meal. Yeah. He falls ill on the, af Ill uh, Ill in on the afternoon. Commas, yes. He's more than appreciative of your gift for personal training <laughs> lessons and he's changed his shape. I mean, yes. Karen, yes. the writing's on the wall. Let's. I, I think I thought about it briefly, but you know what? I think you are making me think about it. it it's, it's, a, it's a classic, isn't it? It is. Anyway, back to you Merry now. Christmas. So what are you what, what have you got to, for Ian? A blood pressure machine. Oh God. So living with you has finally come to it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just think because it was after Mark Goodyear, you know, who uh, had a stroke. Uh, yeah. And he because Ian's very fit and he plays tennis and he can run and jump about like a young thing. And that good used to smoke. I you know, he never smoked that. No. I thought, mm, now you look all very energetic on the outside, but what's going on in those arteries? So I, I just, I, I didn't say to him, well, I've given him a blood pressure machine, so I, I can't really disguise it, can I? Um, you actually give it to him before the... No, 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 no. I, I've got it. We don't have his reaction yet. Oh. Um, I think he'll be excited. Is there anything else you got him? Uh, no. Uh, no, no. For real, so, because they're quite expensive, are they? Uh huh. But I thought we is could... this for yourself, and you just thought it'd be good for no, Ian as well. No, no. But I thought we could take our blood pressure together. I thought it'd be quite you romantic. And Ian. Uh, yeah, quite romantic. So we're going to do that on Christmas morning. Going to take it with us away on holiday. <laughs> are you for real? Uh huh. Would you? What are you asking me if I'm for real? For goodness sake, you, your second husband's having an affair with your first husband's <laughs> wife. <laughs> I'm not, I'm for real, I'm for real. <laughs> what is that you've got there? I've got a well, present for you, by the way. Have you got a present for me? Oh, shit. Yes, of have course you? I have. So this is something that my friend Murdoch got me. It's, it's... Why have all your friends got funny names? Oh, her name's Karen. But we used to work together. Oh, and right. the middle of, we've both got big mouths and yeah. red lipstick. <laughs> uh, natural toilet paper gel by this company called so White. Like W-Y-P-E. I have no idea, Kay. Why would she give me that? What is in this box? Oh I my look God. That What's the chances of us reading this? A smart. A smart reusable applicator. Pop the lid, press the button, swipe with toilet paper, and you're on a roll. Oh, so you actually have to have toilet paper with it. A natural I cooling I the gel used it on its soothing own. gel. Do you have piles? No, maybe I not. used to. Did you? Well, maybe that's why she gave you that. Um, oh, it, it says, why wipe? Wiping with dry toilet paper. Ah, Ouch. It's to moisten the dry, the, the paper. 
Oh, so, you meant the dry parts. No, 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 no. No, that's oh. a different story. So why wipe? Wiping with dry toilet paper can lead to irritation and simply doesn't do the job. So if you've got sticky but bits. If you wipe. You wouldn't clean your dishes with a dry cloth, no. would you? That's why we believe wetter is better. But then wipe. you feel like you wet yourself. I, I don't like feeling too moist down there. You no, know I I'm well, not used to being dry. Yeah, well, <laughs> you took the worst from my mouth. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But who's going to carry this about with them? Jesus. But that was a lovely present. Thank you, Murdoch. Right. That was very kind of you. Yeah. Put that away. It's for me. Maybe just remember my manners the there. Um, I've got some. Um, oh, we've not some built anything. Future. Oh, oh right. so I've got a glass. I never thought of bringing a glass. Oh, so I've You've got, got two glasses. Of you have as well. Yes. All right, go get the glasses. Well, I will because we uh, might have something to celebrate and we can celebrate oh, it right. with the kombucha. Right, but right. Would you like to see my present to you? Uh, yes. Here we yes. go. Do I open it? Even with yes. three nights to... Why not? Oh. I'm not saying we won't edit it out. And by the way, can you just take time to appreciate the gift bag? It's like you're one of your bloody gnomes. No, no, it's just I want it back. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks. Will you give it to somebody else? Yeah, Has that been round the... Yeah. Wait, let's see. No, no, give me it back. It. Wait, let's see who gave it to Wait, let's see. Who used it Wait, first? let's see. Oh, that's been used for years. Oh, it's a jigsaw. Aha, uh-huh. can I have that back? Thank you. <laughs> Lovely. Oh, my God, is it a blanket key? Is it a onesie? Open it up. All right. Well, I'll tell you what, I've got yeah. one of my own. So you open that up and I'll put on mine. So we're going to have matching ones. <laughs> it's a new uniform. Oh, my God. Yeah. It's, uh, it's called an Udi. An Udi. An Udi. No, that's great. Should I put this on just now? Yes. Shall I open up? Well, I give you yours just now. Why don't you put your Udi on? All right, okay. And then I'll read out the email of the week. All right, yeah, yeah. And while you're getting changed. All right. Bit. Oh, it's hot in this thing. <laughs> so basically... You look like Mrs. Claus. In case... I know, don't I? If anyone doesn't know, it's just basically a massive blanket with arms... And a, and a hood. Keeps, which, and a hood, which keeps you really cosy and a nice big pocket in oh, there. That's brilliant. And in the cake. pocket, you can keep your toilet paper moistener. Anyway, <laughs> here is our first Christmas email of the week. Right, Karen, I have got a question for you about scrambled eggs. Do you whisk them before you put them in the pan? Yeah, always. Don't you? I used to, but I was cooking with Marco Pierre White the other day and he taught me to make the creamiest scrambled eggs ever and you do not whisk. How are you cooking with Marco Pierre White? Well, it's the BBC Maestro course that I've been doing, Cooking with Marco Pierre White. It is an online course, 35 lessons in total. Absolutely brilliant. You put the eggs in whole and then you just kind of move them about with the spatulas. Brilliant. I've also spent some time in the Dragon's Den with Peter Jones. Takes you step by step how to set up a business. I mean, you really feel like you are in the room with them. Did you not fancy the Jancis Robinson one? To learn about wine, yes. There are so many new wines out there. Well, she is so nice, really down to earth. I I think even you might learn something. Do you mean not just go with the design on the label? (laughs) No, you can buy a one-off course or a subscription for the whole lot. Actually, a fantastic present for someone. Aw, Kay, thanks. That's really generous of you. (laughs) Trying to find the perfect gift for the budding writer, chef or wellness enthusiast in your life? Give the gift of learning with world-class online courses from BBC Maestro. With courses from Alan Moore, Lee Child, Brian Cox, Jojo Moyes, Sir Billy Connolly and more, BBC Maestro has you covered. Use the code K, that's K-A-Y-E, for a fantastic 40% off gift cards. Make this Christmas unforgettable with BBC Maestro. So, are you ready? Mm Mm-hmm. Well, I am absolutely thrilled uh, to be able to read this email. We've had a few emails from Maria B, who has been in touch with us. And remember, it was early in the summer. She was diagnosed with endometrial uh, cancer and she's had her kind of ups and downs since then. She got a biopsy, wasn't as good as she had hoped and had to go back and have radiotherapy. Mm -hmm. Right. So she's been in touch. Hi, Kay and Karen. I rang the bell today to oh. end my radiotherapy treatment. And she's got two lovely pictures that she's That's put in That's so well. nice. Um, today was my 25th session. Um, so glad it's finished. So thankful for all the love and support I've received from family and friends. The staff at Liverpool Clatterbridge Care Centre are wonderful, as are all the volunteers. I had my treatment on the Juniper machine and the team were just brilliant. So, so grateful for the excellent care I received. Today has been a day of mixed emotions, but it has been a good day. 
Ah, sending love and best wishes to you both. Maria. From Maria. That's fantastic, isn't it? What a lovely, lovely Christmas for you. Isn't it? It's, it's just great. Oh. It makes the hairs in your arm stand up, isn't it? It's just lovely to, yeah. to so hear that. We're wishing you all the Yay. best, Maria. Uh, I hope you have a wonderful Christmas uh, with your family. And the email address, do keep in touch. It's podcast at htb60.com. The emails are an absolute highlight for us. We just love to know how you're getting on with the big six. So so, um, keep them coming if you would. Have you got your present? Right, I have. It's right here. Undone. It's really cozy, Kay. I knew that if I'd hint enough throughout the year, it would get something decent. Put it on. And now is it going to be big enough to go for my big chest? Oh, listen, even your pendulous breasts, p- pendulous breasts will be <laughs> at ease in there. Plenty of room for them to swing about. In fact, you can undo your bra right now and they'll just be rollicking about under there. See, I'm nicer than you thought I was. That's, well, thank you so much indeed. You are more than welcome. That's absolutely gorgeous. And we've got something else to celebrate. Tell me. Well, do you remember um, we were speaking to Alistair Campbell? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, That was just last week, actually. Uh And he was telling us that the rest of politics, which is, of course, his podcast that was launched on the same day. Mm -hmm. um, Yeah, that's funny, isn't it? um, Well, he's celebrating 125 million downloads. That's quite a lot, isn't it? That is quite a lot. That's quite a lot. Um, So we're a little bit behind him, but we are celebrating... One million downloads. That is brilliant, isn't it? Isn't, isn't that it? fantastic? Oh my god! One million, One million downloads. So does that mean to say that? No, don't try and work no. it out. Just, just, just <laughs> exactly. relax and have faith that it's a really, really nice thing. Oh my god, a million. A million. I mean, you wouldn't want to count to a million, would you? No. That's a lot. No, no, you wouldn't. You wouldn't. It would take so a that's while. what we need oh to celebrate. God. Yeah. So let's have your kombucha. Let's have some kombucha. Oh, it does look like horse piss. Can I just tell you that? It does look like a good, strong urine sample. Oh, my God. A bit, oh, my God. <laughs> it smells earthy. Oof, doesn't it? It smells very yeasty. Oh, it sounds like it smells like a urine infection, actually. <laughs> it's not even just a <laughs> urine sample. Oof. I'm glad that none of the mother popped out because sometimes it does. Oh. Like a big blob. The, the smell might put you off, Kay. Send it back to the lab. Oh, fucking hell. <laughs> Cheers. Here's to the next million. <laughs> this is this is like one of those Greek suicide packs where they both drink the cyanide. <laughs> Actually, that tastes a lot more pleasant than it looks or smells. Yes. It yes. It does. Yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah. Yeah. That's not so bad, actually. Have some more. Yeah, okay, thanks. It's good yeah, for your gut. It. it is poison, isn't it? <laughs> mm. Did you think, I mean, that kind of like went over my fingers when I popped it open. And this is the problem. You do have to depop it yeah. every day. It's not bad, that. It's, it's not okay, bad. isn't it? Did I tell you about my wee story about being stood up? No. No, I was going to tell you this a, a couple of podcasts ago and we got kind of swept away with something else. Um, you were stood up? Well, I'd arranged to meet this guy that I'd gone to university with. And I haven't seen him for all these years. You got in touch with him? Well, I don't know how we got in touch with him. Ah, right. So you got in touch with him. Listen, wait a minute. You, Linda, Stephen. That's what she's got COVID. He's mysteriously ill. (laughs) Don't start coming at me with this one. (laughs) So we just arranged to meet up for old time's sake. Mm -hmm. Um, And we went to rekindle. Right. No, there was nothing to kindle. So anyway, arranged to meet in this restaurant. And big mistake, it was a young person's restaurant. So it was really bad lighting. Ah, oh, God. Really noisy. Ah. The menu was written in such small font. I think when they write it in such small font, they're basically saying if you're over 40, piss off. Yes. I yeah, think they might yeah. as well put that Don't on the eat. menu. Don't Too stay. young for you. So anyway, we went in. It was very trendy. It was in London. And when we didn't, I was meeting him there. So I arrived on time, which is unusual for me because I'm usually late, but I couldn't see him. And then I just saw vaguely in the gloom a sort of <laughs> old man sitting. And everyone else was like 20 tops. So I thought, well, that must be him because he's the only old man in the place. And when was the last time you saw him? Um, about 20 years ago. Right. So I thought, right, well, there's an old man. That must be him. So (laughs) I'm standing there and I did a big wave like that. And I advanced towards him. And as I advanced towards him, I realized it wasn't him. Which was like so embarrassing because this guy had seen me. He clocked me. He looked up. And I thought, 
oh my God, and I panicked, what the hell am I going to do? And so I did that thing about looking over his head. That's so embarrassing. <laughs> so you carried on behind him and just like, oh. Pretended God. that there was somebody Someone behind else. him. And there was a young waitress. So I grabbed onto her and I took put my arm around her shoulder. Just somebody you've never seen before. She was she was one of the waiting staff, and I said, "Oh my god, this is embarrassing. Help me out!" And I told her what I'd done. She was really sweet and she was laughing, and so she kind of guided me back to a table. So I thought, "Oh, I've got away <laughs> In the with darkness." That. I thought I'd got away with it. I clearly didn't. I must have made, looked a right tool. So anyway, <laughs> then I sat down there and. Five minutes passed, 10 minutes passed, 15 minutes passed. And I, I could still see this other old man winking at me. Oh. And I thought, what do I do? I've been stood up. Because, Shit. and then that we're in this really thing. trendy restaurant. I'd already made an arse of myself. Do I leave? Had you ordered anything? A no, drink? no. Do I order a drink? Do I not order a drink? Because they first came over and I said, oh, um, I'm just waiting for someone. So they knew I was waiting for someone. And they mm -hmm. knew the person hadn't turned up. Mm -hmm. And oh, my God. God, I was sweating. Did your new best friend witness, waitress try and help you out? No, but no. anyway, he turned up. How late was he? About 15 minutes. He couldn't find a parking space. Oh, but, oh my Take God. Take into London. It oh, my God. a very traumatic. And I bet you turned around to the other old guy. Did you? He's yeah, I did. I did. Yeah. I did. I did. See, I'm not on my own. And he's probably at least three years younger than you. <laughs> Have you ever been stood up? A... No, no. I have. I remember answering an ad in a kind of blind date, not blind date, one of those, you know, dating ads that you got in the Guardian or the List or something like that and going along to a pub quite nearby. And I sat down on my own and I had a kind of squint round. I had a magazine in those days to read. I squint round and I thought, oh God, there's somebody sitting on their own. Oh, God. and I, you just knew that that would be him. And I thought, right, I'm not going to get up and leave right away, but I'm just going to lower my head even further so there can be no eye contact. And I drank my drink because I did have a drink and I just left. <gasps> and oh, you didn't. I did. Oh. And I got back in touch. I know, and I got back in touch and I said, oh, um, I went along. I didn't see you there. Uh, I, I thought you, yeah, what happened? And he said, oh, was that you sitting there with a... With a magazine, I honestly did not think that was you. So he probably thought the same of me. I don't want a date with her. I think I thought at that time, I wanted him, I wanted to believe that he was thinking, oh, I didn't think you'd be single and on your own and looking for it. <laughs> it wasn't that at all. I think he took one look at me and thought, Christ, no way. So um, that, that could have been the love of your life. Well, no, he did, he did. I'm not denying it. All right. I'm okay, not denying it. Enough. Cheers. No more shallow than you. Yeah. I learned from the base. And I just, uh, I think he said, well, do you want to have another go? Do you want to and I said, do you know what? I've got two or three other people on my, you know, how you, when you answer an ad or whatever, or you, you know, people answer your ad. So I said, let me get back to you. And I didn't bother. God, get you, eh? No, he wasn't. He, he just know, as my old Tory boyfriend said, you can't shag a personality. And you know what? <laughs> it doesn't matter how fun they are, if they're not attractive or they're missing a front tooth or a back tooth even or... It's not happening, so, no. Wait, well, I tell you, you better stick with Stephen because that red nose of yours, you're stuffed. <laughs> and my new tooth, it might not be coming. <laughs> As it's Christmas, shall we go for another email of the week? Yeah, yeah. Yes, this is email of the week number two. So this is another um, regular correspondent, which I'm delighted it. to it's say. So nice. We're building a community. Oh, it's beautiful. Community. And it, so it's from Alison. And she says, remember me. And I do remember you, Karen, uh, the burlesque lady from the Isle of Wight. Yes. I yes. remember it. Yes, remember? yes, yes. Absolutely. She sent a picture before. I know. And she sent another one. Oh, excellent. Yes, of the Christmas show. She says, it's hard to believe it's been nearly a year since I last wrote to you oh both. Oh, my God. Right. Alison, I think you were one of the first emails we got, yeah, actually. Yeah, you're probably right. To be honest, I thought you deserted us, Alison, but I'm really <laughs> pleased that you haven't. Um, she says, one year on, I still do the dancing, which I love. Uh, mm -hmm. I may not be the best dancer, she says, and unlike UK, probably won't get picked for Strictly. Oh, my God. I got so, papped out first, yeah. Alison, let's be honest. Mm -hmm. um, but I put my heart and soul into each class. That's We've great. had some interesting songs and routines this year, some a little out of my comfort zone. 
but we've always had a good time. Uh, last weekend was our Christmas show. I wasn't the newbie this year and I felt my mothering skills coming into play. Isn't that lovely? That is lovely. Isn't a woman it? doing burlesque dressed as a burlesque dancer talks about her mothering skills. I think it's great. It should have been your vamping skills, yes. Alison. Um, supporting those first time show dancers. Great fun, had by all. Um, and there's the pictures. Look at that. Isn't that brilliant? Come oh my to God. Mama. Fantastic. Yes, it's fantastic. Oh, yeah. to yourself. I know. Angela Rippon. Um, <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> funny enough, Angela Rippon, mm -hmm. I, I interviewed her a couple of weeks ago. She came on Loose Women. Oh, right. And I was having a big trip there. Um, well, Angela Rippon's 18th birthday. But I was talking about Strictly. I mean, that's incredible. She was incredible. How far did she get? Oh, she she got she got really far. She got to a week eight or week nine or that's something. That's incredible. And she's eighty. She's eighty, and she's standing there. You know, sort of. You, see, you introduce her, Angela Rippon, and she's sort of standing. I can see her. She had on really gorgeous high heels. She strode down the steps. She Great. moves like a young thing. She is absolutely fantastic. So maybe burlesque should still be in the running for my new hobby. Would you consider it? Uh, you it in the South Side. Do they? Yep. No, I might go to the Isle of Wight and do it with Alison <laughs> and see if I can benefit from her mothering skills. <laughs> <laughs> well, so good news. Great to hear from you, Alison. And you are looking fantastic. You really are. And I'm so glad that you're all having fun doing your, your burlesque. So uh, keep in touch. Right. Do you want your present? Oh, gosh, yes, please. Thank you. I'm actually strangely enjoying this kombucha. Yeah, are you now? Is that genuine? Uh, no, no, it is. Your face, you, you put a no. screwed up nose there. No, 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 it is nice. I just wish you could make it look different. Mm. I mean, just as long as you don't sniff it. It really does. It is. Well, I mean, you but, went to a lot of expense here, didn't you? Well, my black tissue that's been re... I know, I, I, I'm all about reusing Recycling, stuff like clearly. Well, that, that wasn't a re-gift, by the way. I did buy it. Is this Yellow Garden twine? Yeah, it's good, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get a discount? <laughs> no, I didn't. I missed a discount. Goal. But however, I've got 10% off my further purchase if I do want any. Or maybe it's 20% actually. <laughs> so people, it is, I have in my hand, the erotic rocket clitoral vibrator. <laughs> Ian is going to be um, probably Redundant. moving out when he sees this. I love the little tagline, blast off to bliss. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, a, I actually see when it first unwrapped, I thought, oh, it's a pocket torch. That's really handy. <laughs> well, uh, you could attach a, I another bigger battery to it. Well, I don't think I want to be shining a light up there particularly, do I? No, not at your age. No, not no. at my age. The most popular style of pocket vibrator gets a 21st century upgrade with a whopping 10 patterns and speeds and boasting truly powerful vibrations. The erotic rocket is a bedside essential you'll want to take everywhere, even the bath Ooh. and the shower. You might get electrocuted. Uh, Maybe that's a bonus. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I'll be. I don't think if I'll you be don't mind. The bath and the shower. If you don't mind, I won't be taking it in the shower. No, but take it on holiday with you. Yeah, just yeah, yeah. Oh, God, I. <laughs> Just not in your hand luggage, because if you have to empty it, it wouldn't be good with the kids. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah, we'll be looking for feedback. Yes, indeed, indeed. Do okay. you want to do a quick bit of bingo before we go? Oh, I right. Hold on a minute. The party uh -huh. spirit here. Yeah. Right. Let's have a look. Uh, I got you something nice and warm and cosy, and you got me. Full of. I got you something with great entertainment mm. or pleasure. Mm. Or, uh, look at you trying to switch on. You need a battery key. All oh, right, yeah. okay. Don't get too keen. Let me get out the door. Do you first. know what? If you give somebody a toy, you're supposed to sellotape you know the batteries on the back. I should have. I know, and it only takes the one. And oh, have you got? Have you got a double A? Well, I'll try and find one. <laughs> double D to double A. Right, right give us a what? What? Now, don't. I bet you know the numbers in that. Don't be going. No, for I a, don't. I don't. A heart. I'll tell you what. One. I'll choose a number for you. Right, you okay, choose a number then. for me. Thirty-one. Oh, I thought you were going to. What number are you going to choose for me before you look? Right, a uh, fifty-three. Okay. So what were you, 41? 31. 31. God, I don't retain information. Do you have youth envy? Um, no. I'm very happy with my age. I'm happy to tell people how old I am. And no, I'm living life. And uh, no, I'm enjoying And do you know what? I'd hate to be going back to my 20s or my 30s, 40s maybe. But no, I'm enjoying being where I am, not working and making the most of life. So no. Well, that's great to hear. I mean, to be fair, if you were younger, you wouldn't be able to live with that red nose. So the fact that you can now is really lovely. The nose wouldn't be there if I were. Uh, what was mine? In years to develop. <laughs> uh, 50. 
D. What was it again? I don't know. You said uh, it. Fifty-three. Go on. Last decent kiss. Last. Last decent snog. Decent snog. Truth. Well, twenty. Must have been two thousand and nine. What happened in 2009? Holy kidding. No, you're not. The thing is, was it before 2009? No. no. When were the children born? Excuse me. It was at the weekend. <laughs> ah, you got it. Where was Ian? Oh, he was here. Did you get a decent snog from Ian at the he's, weekend? He's very, he's very good. You're not looking at me in the eye. Well, you're I'm looking not, at your, I'm you shy. You've got your kombucha. I'm shy. <laughs> you your arse. Did you get a good decent snog at the weekend? But why wouldn't I? It's not often that you get a decent snog. Oh, really? Well. Did Richard not give you one at the family dinner? <laughs> God almighty, I don't know who to run for this quickest. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ, can you imagine? No, thanks. I think we'd better go in case we get ourselves into God, trouble. Two lots more decent snogs in the future. Indeed. I know, and you can introduce your erotic rocket. Ian would die. Would he, he would die. Do you know what to do with it? He would not like it. Why? Would, would he feel no. emancipated? No, what's the word? It's not, what's it? Emasculated. Emasculated. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not good. I'm a bit of a Hilda Alton when it comes to work words. Um, Merry Christmas, everyone. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Um, and we, we do have a podcast on the 29th, an interesting one when you've got a bit of time over the festive period. It's a woman called Cindy Gallup, and she is a very successful advertising agency person uh, but she has chosen to live her life as a single woman she has chosen not to have any relationships not to have any children um, she uh, has set up a website called make love not porn mm -hmm. and she enjoys uh, romantic relationships with younger men but no strings attached she's got a very interesting take mm -hmm. on life mm -hmm. um, and she has absolutely no need of an erotic rocket clitoral vibrator well no she probably does actually yeah so that's it. Um, podcast. Here's the podcast at HTB60 is our email address. We'd love to hear from you. Have a fantastic Christmas and hopefully stick with us in 2024. Yay! Cheers. time to relax. Subscribe to the Hypno SOS podcast. It's calming, effective, and best of all, it's short, around 10 minutes, so you can always find time to listen. So, if you need help with sleep, reducing anxiety, or letting go of stress, or you just need a boost, Hypno SOS is for you. Written and presented by a therapist with over 30 years experience, Ursula James, that's me, by the way. Its weekly episodes contain deep relaxation and powerful and highly effective suggestions to help you get control in your life. With around 200 episodes to choose from and new ones each week, you'll definitely find something that will appeal to you. It's not hypnosis. It's Hypno SOS. And in case you just zoned out there, I'll spell it for you. H-Y-P-N-O S O S. Available on all the usual platforms. Go on, give it a try.